Yep. Did you all? Okay. All right. Hey, Courtney's been on every call. What do you mean? Cammy's. She on the call. I don't know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I know. I'm not going to miss this. Oh, uh, well. I, I got I got a lot of video for us to watch today. I went out and, and did a ride and had some fun and, and grabbed a, some good video that I want to talk and share about. So we'll have some fun with that. But we'll keep chatting here and wait a few more minutes. And uh, I see Steve is with us. Thank you, my man. I'm glad glad to have you on the call. I'm glad somebody's here, right? This would be awkward if I was doing this all by myself and I'm just sitting here talking. <laughs> Yeah, Cammy might check my uh, check my mental health if I was doing that. But if you watch me any day out in the round pen, or you just happen to be at my place, I'm out in the round pen talking to the horses all day long. So it's like I'm just talking anyway. So, well, how's everybody's week? We'll just visit a couple more minutes. And anything spectacular happen? No. <laughs> like a no. Steve, anything happen up in Idaho? Oh, no audio, Steve. I hear, I see you. I see you talking, but I don't hear you talking. Can you hear me now? Now I got you. There you are. I caught a horse that took me an hour and a half to catch for the trimmer. Hey. And, uh, uh, one of the funnest times I had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you a little science, get a little attention, and it worked out? Yeah, I just watched him kind of down to regulate little by little, you know, walked around, did that reverse round pen thing on him, and... And then I got him to lick my hand, and I thought I'd match breaths with him, right? Yeah. Now, you know, that in through the nose and out through the mouth, and I was doing that. And then I realized, wait a minute, they don't breathe through, breathe through their mouth. I was going to say so. <laughs> so I started doing the nose breathing, and while I was figuring that out for myself, he almost went to sleep. Yeah. He just <laughs> got nice and relaxed. relaxed. It was a big, good, relaxed, and uh, and we got him trimmed and that stuff. And I've been in with him every day now. It's uh, but it was just uh, watching that down regulating relaxation was for all that amount of time was uh, yeah. a lot of fun. Ah, uh, good for you. I'm not so. taking the time. We're going to talk about that today because yeah. the little setup I got in on out on this ride the other day. Anyway, I'll talk about time, having the time taken. And I just had a phone call from a guy in Wyoming today, a previous client, and he was talking about some troubles that he was having and taking the time to do this in an exploratory way rather than, oh, I got to hurry and catch this horse for the farrier. You know, he's going to be here in, in eight minutes. I got to hurry and go get that horse caught. Exactly. Oh That's and, where and they're they're not, the good thing is they're not my horses, right? So, yeah. Uh, and I know I've known them their whole lives and stuff, but I could see that where it was a the situation where they're going to the trainer, need to have their teeth done, their feet done, uh, strangles, and they're getting caught yeah. and having the shots and then getting let loose. So about the third or fourth day of that, they weren't having it anymore. Who so, wants to get caught for that? <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun to get them to relax again, just like with them. Um, oh, well, good. Good for you. Take that time. And like, and I, I appreciate and I like that you said it was fun because when we can – you know, go out and kind of engage with our horses without so much having an agenda, but going out more with the experiment in mind, you know, I'm going to go out and see if this or that can happen or just go out and experiment and see what can happen instead of, I got to get this horse caught before the farrier gets here, or I got to have this ready by this time, or, you know, I got to get on this trail ride. That's kind of what I ran into. Yeah. On, on this and, I, and, I, and I was playing hooky from work too. So it was, it was <laughs> Even better. Even better. Well, good for you, Steve. And uh, Cecilia, if I hope I'm saying that right, Cecilia, welcome to the call and uh, glad. You oh, hey, hi. Yes, turn your video on so I can see and say hi. I love having videos so I can see who we're talking to. Celia, tell me a little bit about you. Where are you calling? Where are you from? Oh, I hear you. I see you, but I don't hear you. No, no audio yet. Okay. I've done this before. I'm, I'm not a newbie. I really am not a newbie. I, I've done it. I just haven't done it for a while. I quit Wait. my job. I retired. That's so why beautiful. I'm doing this is so I can figure all this out and be comfortable and, and not be all nerved up and go halfway through my presentation and be, hey, we can't hear you. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's it is astounding. So I was using Zoom probably two years ago and helping a friend of mine that's a professor, was a professor here. And I thought I'd spent two days learning it, two days, two entire weekend days. And I thought I had everything figured out. <laughs> and so the first day of class, he was sick. So I sent, said to his students, okay, he's not coming today, but he'll be here tomorrow. So the next day I have him all set up. And I touch something, I don't even know what, and it takes me someplace, I don't even know how I got there. I don't know how I got there. And I'm just like, I'm supposed to be the expert. And so I just started laughing, thinking, oh, okay, that teaches no. me to be a smarty pants know-it-all. So I finally got it figured out, but it had a lot to do with the fact that so many universities were using this Zoom because we were at COVID and nobody could go to class. And so it happened to a lot of people. You were going along. You didn't even touch anything. Boom, you're someplace. Oh, you're gone. Yeah, you you don't even know how you got there and you don't know how to get back. I'm glad you made it on here today and you got the audio going, but where, where are you from, if you don't mind sharing? Dillon, Montana. Dillon, Montana. Well, Dillon, Montana. So we are in the southern part of the state. Yeah. We're an hour away from Butte. Uh, we're probably an hour and a half to two hours away from the um, Idaho border, the Monida right. Pass. And in Montana, an hour commute is what it takes to go visit your closest neighbors. So you're like close to everything. If it's a <laughs> exactly. drive, you're like, no problem. I'll be yeah. right there. Yeah, no problem. So I have actually been following you for some time. Well, thank you. Uh, I have given your name to lots of people. So here at the University of Montana Western, they have a horse program. Yes. And so they have lots and lots of students and they have, um, they do call it natural horsemanship. Um, and they really do a pretty good job. They sell the colts at the end of a year. So yeah. the kids start them in the fall. Work they them finish them in the spring yeah. and sell them, and um, the horse prices are incredible right now. So they have. I keep sold. hearing that from people. I'm like, well, I, 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 I should sell some horses. What? What is this? It's unbelievable. These are green broke horses. Okay, so really, you would think to yourself, maybe sixty rides. You're selling these horses for ten and twelve thousand dollars, and and we're not even talking. Okay. Fancy, fancy. That's what we're I'm talking. Fancy. We're talking regular just horses. <laughs> just regular horses. Yeah, it's astounding. You know, that's, good. that's good news, though, because the horse market from, you know, in the past has been in such a just a, it a place that, you know, so I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I am glad yeah. to hear it. I'm, it's true. You're probably not getting enough money for your horses. Probably not. Yes, you're probably not getting enough. Have you ever heard of the Billings livestock sale that they have here in Montana? No. They'll sell two and three hundred horses and average seven grand. Average. We knew a kid who took a horse that was lame. The <laughs> horse had been lame. He couldn't fix it. He tried. Took the horse, ran it through, and you know, just loose, loose. Got seven grand. Wow. Seven thousand dollars. Why? Like we, I think we don't I know. Fifteen runs right from me to you, so all I got to do is just jump on the freeway right here, drive a straight line for probably fifteen hours, and I could we could be in a exactly, horse. exactly. So you know, it Lama. would. Um, I think you would. I think you'd do well, actually. Well, I, maybe I don't know. I don't have any ready to sell you. I've got a couple that I'm going to be working on here through the summer up at the ranch, and so maybe next fall I'll have them where I feel comfortable that they could go with somebody. So maybe that's what'll happen. I don't know. Yeah. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. And uh, Thank you. yeah, we're, we're going to go through a couple of videos and just kind of talk. And I, I just like to share kind of what I run into during the week, whether it's just with a client horse or uh, just one of my horses or whatever I'm just doing. And mm -hmm. I try to share some of the maybe things that I learned either the easy way or sometimes the hard way, but just a place to share and talk and, and get me more communicating with people and, and talking. I've been kind of a long time just hanging out with the horses. So now I got to get back talking to people. So <laughs> welcome and thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. And then I see uh, Kathy. I'm seeing somebody there. Kathy, let's see. Say hi. How are you? Hi. How is everybody? Great. Thank you. And where are you, call where are you joining us from? 
I'm joining from a long way from you guys, um, New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. I've been, yeah, I've been, I follow, I've been following you um, on and off, but this the video that came up today resonated with me, and I thought, yep, I'll jump on. And Let's see yeah, what here I am. Well, thank you, Kathy, for joining us from New Zealand. I appreciate yep. your time and, and jumping on here. So, and feel free. Oh, Everybody feels comfortable and, you know, we'll just kind of chat and talk along the way. And if you've got something that I really want this to be, it's good. It's, it's, this is a, a small enough group size. We can really have some good conversations. And so I, I hope we'll find some time to do that. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Sounds great. You've got your buddy there. You've got your dog joining us too. What's yep. his name? <laughs> uh, that's Richie. 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 Okay. Hello, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dog's looking at <laughs> so Got to have an animal around you. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. so, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Well, all right. Um, let me switch this over here. I'm going to see if I can get this to a screen share and uh, get things going the way I want here. Give me a second. There we go. We're getting there. Okay. Get everything set up here where I can see everything in the right places. All right. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what you're going to see and uh, and about this this Mustang. So this Mustang, her name is Winter and I, she's 4ish, maybe maybe 5, just anyway, right in there. And uh she's been here training with me for a few months, for sure. I think we're around, oh, I don't know exactly looking at the hours, but we're probably, I don't know, around 80 hours kind of a training. I may kind of keep track of things by hours. <laughs> She's close to that, maybe 70 or 80. And uh, anyway, so today or in this video, this was her first ride out in open country or her first ride outside of the round pen. And then in the round pen, she's probably only had four or five rides in the round pen. So just giving you some background on what she is, um, where she's at with things. And so in all that training time I've been doing with her, it's really been working with her, you know, to downregulate, getting her calm to where she can handle pressure. And poor Winter had a huge sensitivity to just being touched. Like just when she first kind of got here and being around her, kind of putting your hands on her, she would just kind of tremble and shake. And she was so so worried about being touched and uh we've we've worked through that beautifully it, it took some time you know every lesson would kind of work on that but anyway so today was a big day for her and i that we're going out on her first ride out in open country and so i went to a, a trailhead that's just up the road from me here and uh didn't have you know everything went smooth in the trailer i'd only loaded her in the trailer one and a half times before we went off on this ride and uh, she was able to stay really calm. You know, we just negotiated that nicely. So felt good that I'd be able to get her back in the trailer after a ride, right? That can be super frustrating if you got a horse that's really cautious and box at the trailer and, you know, you're spending another two hours trying to get the dang horse loaded. So that didn't happen nice and good. But what did happen, right? What did happen? Um, so I got her out of the trailer and you can see my trailer over there, kind of left side of the screen. And I walked her along the roadway here and got over to this step over. And I was just kind of observing her behavior from the trailer, you know, time I got her tacked up and everything was good. She was staying nice and down regulated. We walked over here, not much of an issue at all. She walked along nicely, but what I want you to kind of watch here as we get to the, to this step over and I'll, I'm going to, we got a fair amount of video today, just because I want to kind of show and demonstrate what happened and I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit during the video and then at the end we'll pause and ask if you guys have got some questions but I kind of want to clarify what you're looking at. Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. So we're just the step over and I just walk up and I wanted to get her one I wanted to see what she was going to what her behavior was going to be like going over the step over. You know, was that going to be a problem? Was she just going to glide right across it? You know, so I was just kind of using this step over as stimulus. This was just something I wanted to read, you know, where is she at before I get on her? Like I wasn't planning on videoing really anything 
other than just some little video shots to send to her owner, you know, to show the progress. And so I walk up to the step over and I just, she kind of balked and had trouble. So I just grabbed my phone and started videoing. So we'll just play and I'll kind of narrate and uh, talk along as we go here. Uh, it says this video, I don't know if you can see the time, 19 minutes. We're not going to go all 19. I'll kind of fast forward and move around, but let's start and just kind of see where we're at here. And what I want you to, what I want to tell you, first of all, so screen right, if you're looking at the right side, you kind of see where her ears and eyes are looking right now. So about a half a mile away is the highway that's going past right there. And so that's what she's looking at. That's kind of what the problem comes up here is that she kept getting a little bit triggered and it kept grabbing her attention was towards the highway or towards these cars. And so to uh, review right on our, some of our other conversations that to the horses, everything is a threat until proven otherwise. So this is winter's first time out and she's a little upregulated that, you know, she's out with me and hasn't been out here before. So she's aware of things but I noticed as the cars and the trucks were driving by on the freeway, you know, that movement just kept capturing her attention. I'll just let this play here for a minute. And uh, that ended up kind of becoming part of what the issue was that I couldn't get her attentive to doing the thing. So watch her, her face and mostly watch her ears. And you can tell when she gets triggered away, like right there, she's, away and now she's back to the problem i'm wanting her to be very attentive to the problem or you know attentive to what's right in front of her but look how she struggles like right now she can be engaged she's kind of looking around and then boom the cars grab her attention and let's just i just want you to kind of watch how the cars keep taking her attention away from me and away from what i'm asking her to do Watch her ears. Her ears really tell the story. When her ears are soft, she's more engaged mentally kind of watching and working with me. But when her ears are up and alert, you know, she's, she's keying off of that traffic and she's looking at the cars coming by. So, you know, I'm asking her to take a step forward and she's like, I'm worried about what's over there. I, can't, I don't even want to step forward. I'm kind of pulling right here. I'm like, come on, girl, you let's do this. I'm trying to get her attention to get her to be able to step across that. All right, we're going to pause right here and just talk for a minute. Yes, I wear shorts and ride a horse. I know that's against a lot of cowboy code, but not at my place. So... <laughs> We'll just handle that right off the gate. It's not a problem to me, so I'm fine with it. Uh, but so could you notice there was I was asking her to, you know, to engage, to kind of come with me. But could you see how the traffic kept grabbing her attention? Like it just kept, she'd look at it, be engaged, and then boom, her attention would go a half a mile away to the cars. And then I could get her back and then she'd go back to the cars. So what I'm going to do next is just change my setup and I'm going to use sending and I want to brief. This can be a whole nother conversation that we'll do another time on the value of sending. But right here, you'll see the value in that I'm going to change my body position. And rather than me being up in front, asking the horse to come into my space, I'm going to be off to the side, directing the horse to go into the thing, rather it's, you know, a step over to trailhead, maybe into the horse trailer, into the water crossing, onto a bridge, whatever. So having a good sending tool and having that calm and comfortable with your horse really pays off. Because like right here, I'm stuck. Like if I had to lead her across this, it wasn't happening. You know, she tried one time and, you know, maybe if I'd have kept tinkering around for a while, I could have got it. But let's watch how effective just switching tactics. But I'm just going to change things up, get my lead rope change my body position and change my energy to where rather than asking her to come into me, I can create a little bit of energy behind her. And watch the highway still kind of gets her. See there, she's looking at the highway.
I love that she's being curious and, you know, she's touching the sides and I'm, she's even munching on the sagebrush. I love that she's mentally engaged with me there close locally until the highway kind of gets her attention. And now right here, you're going to see her kind of have a big flinch. She turns her head to the right and she's really fixated on the highway and the pressure of my lead rope just kind of bumps her on the nose right there and sends her on through. So what I want to talk about right here for just a moment, it's not about the step over, right? Like when I was leading her into it, my human story, right? The mind, the storyteller that us humans have, we tell stories, horses have experiences. I could tell the story that, well, gosh, I just, you know, she's was scared to step over the step over. You know, I could lead her right up to the step over. I could lead her all around the trailhead, around my truck. But as soon as I got over the step over, I just couldn't get her to go over the step over, right? You see how that could be the human story. But scientifically or actually what was happening, she got up to the step over and that was just stimulus. So let's say that we're walking along and she's at a level, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of arbitrarily making this up. Let's say at a level 10, we have a problem and you know, on down things are good. So let's say we're walking along and she could be at a four or five, you know, she's aware of what's going around the trailhead leading nicely. But as soon as I get over to the step over, let's say we're at a five, just the step over itself, there's stimulus. Let's say we go six, maybe a seven, because she's like, oh, what is this? And then let's add the traffic in a half a mile away that she sees seven. Now maybe we're eight, maybe we're a nine. And you see how that can just keep escalating if we keep trigger stacking. We just keep adding things on top of each other. So it, it wasn't about the step over. It was about getting her mind mentally with me there geographically, you know, within like a, a 10, 20 foot circle of us. Her mind was a half a mile away looking at the highway. So we changed uh, to sending rather than trying to lead her into it, changed my body position. You see how easy she walked through that? I mean, she just walked through, let's go back to the first one. Like right here, you know, I changed my setup. Look how calm and easy it was for her to step over that. So we had all the pressure in the right places and all the communication right to where her mind could mentally engage. And she's like, okay, I've got to deal with this stimulus. I have got to engage with this thing that's right in front of me. And then she just easily stepped right over it. Now she was nice and down regulated before we got there. So meaning, you know, should have come out of the trailer as sketched out mess. There was probably no way I'd have got her across that step over. So anyway, the little, little things here, but I want to keep, keep showing uh, what we end up doing, but any questions or thoughts to this point? Before I jump into this next little section, does that make sense of what I'm saying? I'm getting a thumbs up and some nods. That, that'll work. That'll be awesome if that's what it, but if you've got a question or a thought, jump on and, and let's talk about it. Um, but what I'm going to go into, so what I've kind of read in this, now this was winter's first ride out in the open. And what I don't want to do is get out in the open on a first ride and have to pull out my cowboy professional rodeo card and you know get scored on a buck and runaway horse ride right i want nothing to do with that kind of an experience going out on a horse ride and so as i got working with her and kind of got to feeling the the stimulus and feeling what was going on around her like she was she was worried about that freeway the highway she wasn't terribly cautious but it, it had her attention and i didn't like it i didn't like that you know, a van driving a half a mile away was more important than me. I don't, I did not like that in our relationship. And so that was kind of concerning. And I figured, you know, that at this step over, I could really feel that. And I was like, wow, she's worried about that highway or she's just worried about things moving that far away. She's just really being honest with me and saying, hey, West, I'm pretty scatterbrained right now. I'm out in some new space. My mind is stretched out for a half a mile in every direction. I am looking for things to be cautious about because I am cautious on the inside, right? She was feeling a little upregulated. So 
that car driving by a half a mile away was grabbing her attention and taking it off of me. I didn't like that <clears throat> from a safety perspective. So here's, here's what I'm going to set up and, and do with her here. And uh, you guys have seen me or we've talked about it. I know, you know, those of you that I've worked with, Courtney, I think you're, and Beth, well, I don't know if we did. No, Beth, we didn't do this back. That original program that, that we did, I think we started, we didn't have this attention um, tool that I'm about to use here. It's kind of a new that I've added in. But what I'm going to do is, is set Winter up in a space here where I'm going to ask for her attention. And so what I'm doing, is I'm going to position myself to where I am. You know, she has to look at me versus looking you know to her left to the road so you can see when she turns left and looks at the road and i'm just going to pick the lead rope up every time she turns and looks at the highway i'm going to draw her attention towards me so here i'm asking i'm being super patient and she's not finding it yet i'm going to just start turning this pressure up a little more and a little more as she gets distracted so see how she's got the attention on the road and I'm just going to keep working this because I want to get her mind on me, not on the road. I'll just watch here for a minute. So the idea is I'm picking the rope up and walking the opposite direction that she's looking. I want to draw her attention to me. So there you can see as soon as she gives me her attention, you see her head come down. She licks and chews. So like right now, she's connected to me. until a Tweety Bird flies by or a car on the highway. See, I want her watching every move that I make. If I move, I want her aware of it, not watching that traffic. Right there, can you feel that big shift? And then she, I mean, she come down and then got distracted. I need to watch the elevation of her head. Her, the elevation of her head tells the whole story of where she's at chemically. I'm going to pause it right here for just a minute. Let's have a little conversation. What did you notice? What do you see? What what thoughts come up to any of you about about this setup or kind of what's going on?
West, I see a horse that's trying really hard. <laughs> yeah, Beth. Winter is a sweetheart. She's a total sweetheart. She just absolutely is. And yeah, I mean, right, could you just see her head back and forth and up and down like she'd get kind of stuck? And yeah, you're you're so right. She's not trying to be, they're, they're not ever really trying to be defiant. It's just how mentally stuck are they, you know? And so this was her, and I, I felt like it worked, you know, we're working it out very calmly and, and things are coming around, but Yes, Beth, I agree. She's she was working really hard to find to find me. Right out in this big environment. Right. She's she's comfortable with me. You know, she's seen me for you know 70-ish hours or so. We've been hanging out. But out in this environment, wow, she had questions, right? She's asked to me, I'm reading this as her asking questions when she turns and looks at the highway, you know, or looks over at those cars. That's her asking, am I safe? Right. She's asking it just in a self in a neurochemical state, like, boy, am I safe? And, you know, she wants to sit and look at those cars. So and then me bringing her attention back to me is, is my way of, you know, I'm I want to answer that question neurochemically. Yes, you are safe by getting her to downregulate. So could you see the few times that she would soften her whole body and just drop her head and lick and chew? Yeah, that's that's the behavior I'm looking for is to. I'm, I'm fine with them being tense, but I don't want to leave them tense more than just a few seconds. Can they find their way back? Can they start coming back down? Anybody else? Any thoughts? What did you see or questions? I like I liked setting this up. And, and I mean, I picked the angles that I used on purpose. I wanted the cars, you know, that traffic is just out of her left eye you know, half a mile away on the left side of her. And so it was easy for her to, you know, she could see the traffic kind of out of the side peripherally and be watching me. You know, so it wasn't like it was putting the traffic directly behind her where she might get really anxious and get nervous. It's just off to the side where she could choose to look over there when she was concerned. And then can I get her to choose to come back? That's what I kept asking myself is, can I get her to come back to me? Can I get her to Find me, be attentive, and relax. Because this is the trouble, right? If if they get if our horses get too upregulated and we can't get them to come back down with us, you know, find us or find this down regulation, up just keeps going up until you go down, right? And it's those it's those downs that hurt, right? That's the that's not the fun part. And so having these, these little uh, up regulation, down regulation where it flows, right? I'm fine with her being alert and cautious about things, but can she let that shift and come back down? If they can't come back down, that's where the trouble starts is right there. How do I get this to come down instead of it keep going up? And so think me thinking of going on this ride, like going through that uh, step over, going through that gate, I'm going to be riding kind of parallel to the highway. It's still a half a mile away, but do I want to deal with her mind for the next 45 minutes of her checking and looking at every car that comes by? She's going to, you know, turn her head and be an upregulate. I mean, you know, shoot over 30, 40 minutes of that. You know, we've had a few hundred upticks. That's going to cause me a problem somewhere. I, I know it. I, I, I know it's going to cause me a problem. So I didn't want those few hundred upticks to even happen because I felt them just going over the gate when I was trying to lead her through it. I could tell I wasn't number one. I was not number one in her reticular activating system. You guys remember, those of you I've talked with, the reticular activating system, that chunk of the brain, it's, it's at the base of the brain and the top of the spine, and the reticular activating system is in charge of reading sight, sound, and touch. In this case, sight was the trigger, right? That's what got her is she would see a, a, that car go by half a mile away and that would grab her sight attention. And then the reticular activating system kind of assigns a level of threat. How concerning should we be? Well, it was concerning enough that she kept looking at it. And so that's what I wanted to fix. I like, I don't want to go through our whole trail ride today with you being triggered and looking at these cars every time we go by. So did this little exercise. So this is 
attention, right? And, and getting my horse to pay attention and just picking the lead rope up and getting the horse to draw its attention to me, release and get the horse licking and chewing, get them to where they want to be more attentive. But even then I didn't feel like I had winter quite in the palm of my hands. Like I didn't quite feel like we're, I still want more. And this will be a good time for us to talk. And Steve, we talked a little bit kind of before we got started though, about going out and, uh, you know, going out and having some fun with your horses and having the time to do it. So the time to teach your horse this attention process isn't out on the trail ride. This is the time to prove that it works, to see what you have under pressure. The time to teach this, you know, is at home when you've got time and you're not on an agenda. Because what would this have been like if I'd have had, you know, four or five of my buddies going on this ride and, you know, they all go through the step over and they're headed down the road. And one, I could have just followed along. I'm sure she would have just flowed right over that step over with a couple other horses in front of her but she still would have been watching those cars and, you know, maybe a half hour down the road, we still could have had some problems or maybe they all go across and I'm like, you know what? I don't feel like I'm going to get in the saddle. I'm going to stay here and, or, you know, I'm going to hold back. I'll catch up. And then if winter is all connected with those other horses, we're going to have more of a meltdown. So the place to get your tools in place is at home. And then you take them with you out on the ride and then use them to your advantage. So, in this one, I, I use the attention to, to work, and then I'm going to move in here to another one. This uh, here in a moment, at some point anyway, this kind of a Mustang meditation is what I call it. I put my hands up over their eyes and try to get them to relax without having their eyesight. And uh, let me drag this forward here just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I take her. I took her for a little walk and then brought her back to just kind of relieve some of the just the tension. Do you see even walking into the shot right there? She was like looking at the road. She has still got a little bit of a bug about that road, which is which is OK. I'm not saying she shouldn't. But can I draw her back? Can I have her be with me? Because If I can't get her with me, she's going to get more and more reactive. Right. She's going to get more cautious. And we're just going to end up having more and more problems. So you can see her head now. Oh, I was just about to brag on her a little bit. And then she, right, but this tool is helping to get her attended to me and get her off of that road. I'm going to fast forward. I thought it was a little closer. Oh, here we go. So I just put my hands up above their eyes. And when they lower their head, I'm just giving a nice release. Now she's been through this many, many times. And then lifting my legs and touching her. You notice you see my feet touching her shoulder. If I touch her shoulder and I get a big muscle quiver, now we've got the touch sensitivity that's firing. You know, not just sight with the cars. Now we've got touch also happening. So I really like that I could touch her shoulders. She didn't have, big, you know, she didn't twitch her muscles. She didn't have a big breakdown about it. She just let that touch happen, but she was pretty okay. I'm just going to bend her to the side here and I'm touching. You're just checking those other triggers. Like, is she going to be something going to get her moving and get my little pre stretch going on, right? I get my stretch here before we get going. Can I move her hips? Can I get her to start? Can I get her to stop? These are all just little questions that I want to ask. So there I'm asking her to stop, but look at her. See where her eyes are? She is still watching that traffic. So I'm still not feeling like I want to jump on and go have this horse ride because she is just not mentally hanging out with me. She's 20% with me, 80% watching the traffic. I mean, just look at her ears. You can tell exactly where her mind is.
And this is about the spot I would get on if I was feeling good, but I just wasn't feeling like she was mentally with me enough that I wanted to get on and go right across that step over. I hope that wind's not too loud for you, but it's not too bad. I kind of started uh, asking the horses to follow along with me while I've got my hands on the rise. And I let, you know, they can still see out the bottom. I'm just, can they manage the pressure and can they stay focused with me enough that they can kind of walk and follow along with me? She's kind of struggling. I mean, you know, I've got to keep working this circle until she really tracks out. Do you guys see how, I'm going to pause it right here for just a minute. <clears throat> Watch how her front feet get stuck. Like, like, like they just move slower. The hind end kind of goes around, but the front feet are just a little sticky. That's that uh, vagal ventral brake, that front part of the vagus system shutting down. It's like putting the emergency brake on. So it's her autonomic system saying, I am still cautious about walking forward. I just, I'll back this up just a little bit, but you watch her front feet and they kind of get stuck to the ground. That's why I'm walking this tight circle. So like right there, they get stuck. See the hips going around and then they get going. And then they got stuck again. And then I get them going. Now she's starting to walk out. Feel how, see how she's walking out nicer now. That's just a good read of when that emergency brake, when the horse has got that emergency brake on, those front feet get stuck. That's the beginning of trouble, right? That's, we're still not feeling safe and relaxed. So I take her for a little stroll up the road, leading her by her eyes in a sense. So there her feet got stuck again, you know, something got her cautious. I'm just trying to get her down regulated to where she's really being attentive and following my feel and following along with, with what I'm doing. Again, this is a tool to use out on the treads, but it's not one to teach. You know, we got this working nicely at home before we go put it under pressure and expect her to, you know, find her way to relax with me out at the trail. All right, we'll pause right here for a minute. And then I'm just gonna show you a couple little clips of us out riding, but any thoughts or questions up to this point? Does this make sense? I'm, I'm, you know, we've had the, we've had our other uh, webinar call chats about, you know, humans tell stories and horses have experiences. It was interesting to me at the step over that, you know, I started noticing that it was like my storyline started to roll up too. It's like, oh, why is she having trouble with this step over? But then as I watched her attention, I was like, this has nothing to do with the step over. It's, you know, she's losing attention. That's where the trouble is, but. Any thoughts or comments before? I'd love to hear what you have to say. So somebody asked me something. Oh, I see you talking, but I don't hear you. All right, Wes, can I ask you, how much time did you spend with her before you took her? So you went and caught her, you threw, him, threw her in the horse trailer. Did you spend time with her like you do so often with these horses, down regulating, down regulating, asking them to put their heads down, asking them to lick and chew, you know, doing yes. a lot of that. Did you do that? Yes, yes, um, and, it, and I and I did. So this day that this happened, um, you know, getting her up there, getting her in the trailer. So that took a little bit for her to calmly get in the trailer, and then mm -hmm. I hung out in the trailer and bent her to the side and yielded her hips and did this meditation in the trailer. You know, we're probably in the trailer for 45 minutes, just, you know, relaxing oh. and just, cause I didn't want to take the pressure of the trailer with me on the trailer ride and on the trail ride. So we got in the trailer. Yeah. So it, 
if I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, I'm going to go on a horse ride today around two, I might not get out of my driveway till three. And then, right, I, get, right. then I get to the trailhead, I might not even get out of the horse trailer for 30 minutes because, you know, they're edgy in there and I'm just working this down regulation because right. just working them through it. So yes. And that's why this even come up. And because honestly, she was really she right. was better than a lot of domestic broke horses. Yes. In opinion, you know, yeah. behavior wise. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to watch her though. She, it's almost like it's a secret. So she looks at you and she puts her head down and then she's like, I can't help myself. I have to look to the left. I can't help it. I, I have to see where that car is. You know it. And it's just so funny. I I just see how important this is with these horses, no matter what their age is. Um, and it's that's yeah. why I really wanted to watch this because, you know, if you, so I'm an older rider, but I've been riding for a long, long time. Yeah. But I find that as we get older, we lose our confidence because we don't move as well as we did when we were young. And so we're nervous and we are, we're, we're pushing that nervousness on them. And so yeah. I'm just trying to have a better understanding of, you know, the steps and the, and I want to take the time. I, I'm not going to be in a hurry. I'm not going to, you know, cause that's what gets you hurt. Absolutely. And that's the, the fun part or that I'm really finding in, in, in horses. I used to love going on the rides. Like, yes, I want to be in the mountains and I want to go do this trail ride. And I'm getting so lost in the, these little finite things that I can spend, you know, an hour in the horse trailer with this horse going over all the moves that's going to happen. You know, you're going to need to turn around in here. So can you turn around and be comfortable? Let's, mm -hmm. let's do half of a turn and then let's relax. Let's do the other half and then let's relax. Now let's go this the opposite way, half a turn. I sit and do all of that. And it's just very intriguing because I have the science now that I'm kind of following and I'm, I'm wanting these licks and chews. You know, I'm wanting to see this down mm -hmm. regulation and it's so rewarding to me mm -hmm. to, to feel that down regulation because like you're saying you could watch her like when she was attended to me you could see her let it go right I mean it was mm -hmm. awesome. she would just lower her head lick and chew and she's like oh yeah. that's so good and then like you yeah. said like and what about that thing <laughs> you know it's just that but it's those it's those little things yeah you stack a hundred of those up or two hundred right. of right. course that can't down regulate that's where our troubles come in so Helping mm -hmm. her to downregulate because I don't expect her to never look at things. I just right. don't want her to get fixated on a thing and get stuck. Right. So, right. Yes. Love it. And yeah, but yeah. So, yeah, this whole trail ride, I was probably gone, you know, two and a half, three hours. And I probably only was in the saddle for 15 minutes when we went out riding. Because, yeah. well, I'm going to show you some video. We went out on the ride. She was chill. We at first she had some questions about who was in charge of where we were going. Right? She mm -hmm. was like this way, and I'm like this way. I didn't have an agenda, but whatever way she said, I just said the other way, and I did that for probably 20 minutes. If she went right, I would ask left. If she went left, I would ask right. And after a while, she was like, "How about we go straight?" And I'm like, "Dude, that's a freaking awesome idea." I love, I love it. Let's go straight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because yeah. the more anxious and nervous and cautious your horse is, the more of this they mm -hmm. want to be doing. Because if they're in a straight line, predators can predict this straight line and make the attack to meet. But if they're always wandering around, the predator can't figure out, well, what the hell? Where are they going? Green. Yeah. Yeah. Time this. So that's you know, a lot of why our horses have a hard time going in a straight line when they're anxious and nervous. Okay. It just doesn't biologically make sense to them. Right. Why would I, I telegraph? I'm, I'm already scared of dying. And now you want me to telegraph to those, you know, thousand pound grizzly bears that are going 45 miles an hour on a black trail. And you want me to chill the hell out. I don't think so. I am going to serpentine. I am worried. I'm looking for somewhere I can. <laughs> anyway, it was super fun to, uh, we got that all worked out. And then we went, uh, any other questions, but I'm going to move along. I'll get to the trail, no. but thank you. Yes. Thanks. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Anything else, Celia? Cecilia? No, okay. 
right. Oh, Kate, you made it on the call, Kate. Hello. Hi there. Thank you. Yes. So, Kate, I don't see your face, but I'm assuming this is Kate that owns Winter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I. Anyway, well, we're I joined a little bit late, but I've been here for about a half hour. So, oh, oh well, then you've you've heard a fair amount. Then you, I have. Any yep. thoughts or questions on from you? This is this I, is your girl. Yeah, I you know I honestly am really impressed. I I'm I just watching her downregulate, even if it takes a few minutes. I I mean, for you to spend 20, 40 minutes, you know, with her right outside. The trailer, it just is impressive to watch how she's evolved and how she's grown. Uh, And I mean, she didn't freak out. She was aware. She was cautious, but um, she didn't freak out, which is a huge step forward. Absolutely. Like, and that's where I'm, I'm I'm okay with the horse, you know, being alert or even being mm -hmm. triggered if I can get them back. If you can't get them back. Now here's, this is the problem because guarantee if I can't get him back, you ain't going to get her back. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, yeah. That's and that's, that's, that's where we had been, you know, prior to her coming to see you was we could never get her back. I, I mean, and it would be two days. I mean, she'd be freaked out for a couple of days and we'd have to start at ground zero again. Yeah. So well, no, I, I love all of this. She has been, it has been a just, a real treat to, to work with her and go through. She's got such the timid personality and she's just mm-hmm. so dang sweet and timid and, and trembly scared. Not anymore <laughs> though, Kate, not anymore. I, no. I, we've got those muscle twitches. She is so calm now. And remember our last, oh, it was a while ago that we talked, but you know, the hips were kind of where she was yep. holding the last bit of tension and that is just all gone and it is so good now it is just can't wait i can't wait to just see her in action yes just well you know i'm gonna it'll hit be- the play. i'm gonna hit the play button right now and you're gonna see her out on her first ride out in the open and we'll just take a look at you know what she looks like now this is after like i said about 20 minutes of negotiating who was in charge of what direction we were going that's just natural so it wasn't her arguing with me she just didn't know how things worked out there because she was just got upregulated enough. She was like, I'll take us to safety. You just, you know, stick with me. I'm going to do whatever. And she would ended up back at the trailer or something. But um, here's just, we'll just jump in here and just, I think it's coming right up. All right. So this is just a little obstacle here. I'll pause it here as soon as she, I think we're coming into frame right here. Oh, here we go. So what I want you guys to watch for, we got, oh, geez, we don't have much time left, but I want you to watch, and it's still a tension that I'm working with in in getting her to step off of this rock, right? You'll watch her attention leave where we're at and and go out to the trees or go to the far distance. I'm just trying to bring her attention to the issue at hand. Like, this is what's right here. Let's let's relax and, and focus. So there she's gone and back. I'm just, that's all I'm doing is the same attention. I'm just in the saddle. She tries to leave and I'm just saying, no, let's just stand here. I'm not even asking her to walk down it. I'm just saying, can you stand and look at it? And then you watch, you'll see your mind just Engage, let's figure this out, and she starts working on it. Right there, she just bought in, like, you can kind of see the same when she's attentive and when she's out.
okay, when she stepped off of that rock and the clatter, the, the adrenaline is free. What did I tell people when they're riding with me? Because I tell you, I got a shot of adrenaline. When she stepped off of that rock, it kind of slipped a little bit and the noise and the... But watch what she did. I mean, she didn't do a dang thing, but just walk right off of there, just calm and as slow as ever. Let's see if I can right here. Just watch that step again that she kind of slips, but she doesn't react. She just stays chill and then walks right out of it. That was, that was awesome to me. So we walked over here, licked and chewed, and then I'm just bringing her back. Watch what she does with her muzzle. Did you guys see that? What are those things on the end of the muzzle called? Yes, I, I don't hear Vibrisi. Vibrisi, yes, vibrisi. And they are used for feelers. I'm going to back this up. But before she's going to step her foot up on there or walk up on that thing, you're damn right she wants to touch it and feel it and know what it is. And she's a little cautious. I mean, so I'm, I'm grateful that she did, and I give her the time to do it. Touch it again, and then she's like, okay, I can do it. And then watch this little ridge right here, too. Touched it once, twice, okay, three times, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love the curiosity. I mean, that is curiosity builds confidence. As long as she stays engaged and down here, I'll, I'll let her play and work. That was great. Oh, and then okay. I left this little video. I want to give you up on where we're at with Winter. Look at this. This was Winter's first time being so saddled. Yeah, she's had a big day today. Come with me, Winter. Well, watch her attention. This was from a few months ago, but... <laughs> was that awesome or what right she didn't even have a heart attack or die or nothing so just when that barrel fell off i mean did you notice her eyes just took a quick look and she came right back to me i mean this was when she was just really getting into this attention but what do you guys think about the the rock and the ride out here this is her first ride out in the open. But you see her do some troubleshooting and kind of how she worked through that? Questions, thoughts? Yeah, that, was, that was great. Um, I just wanted to know if she was, my horse backs up in situations like that. So he will go backwards a lot. Um, do you just keep them facing to the, to the, what you're asking of them? Yes, and then he may back up, you know, five feet away or 10 feet away. And you got to start wherever he's comfortable and then right. only ask. And I just ask for one step at a time. Like if he backs up wherever he stops, like, okay, but yes, I do. I want to just stay facing it. And then can I ask for one step, not go back up there and let's try to do it again. But can you just walk one step towards it? Release, yeah. relax, two steps, release, relax, the third step. Yeah. But basically building their confidence to where the, the sight of a problem or the sight of a thing doesn't just send them like clear out of here. Can they stay focused to problem solve and engage? Yeah, because I my horse, um, he's a part gypsy cob and he's very, very calm and quiet in most situations. But if he sees something in the distance or we came across pigs the other day and he totally lost it. And we ended up spinning because he wanted to run away. So I was trying to disengage his hindquarters, but he just kept spinning. Yeah. So do you, would you have got off in that situation and got him? I mean, it was a hard, you know, I feel safer on him than I do off him when he's like that. 
But do you would you have got off a horse like that in that in a situation where they have gone sort of out of their mind? I I'll answer it. Both would be very appropriate. Like you said, if knowing the horse, if you feel more comfortable on than off, then that's a great way to handle it. But you know, how do you handle it and how do you get everything safe? But if it's a horse that you're not feeling comfortable with, or I'm not sure, yeah, I'm looking for the, how can I get this handled enough? I can get on the ground because that's, that's where I want to be. If I don't know the horse enough to know what's going to happen. And so then Kathy, that's something to look at too, is like, so your guy got, he got triggered off of sight, you know, something sight got him triggered and he couldn't come down fast enough to stay engaged. I, yeah. let, let's start looking at that. You know, how can you break that apart to where, and so this attention could really help out if you take him somewhere and, you know, he, he gets locked onto something, bring him back and relax. Helping that yeah. cycle happen in a safe environment, a controlled environment where you've got the time and then go out on the trail and go out into the world and see how that helps out because it sounds like he's you know he just had that initial sight trigger and boom just couldn't recover. He's, um, he copes with a lot of situations but new situations and it can be sound as well he'll he's triggered and he does yeah. take a while to come back down um which is challenging I, so you could do this attention game i'm gonna you guys i'm working yeah. on a whole new videos whole new video series this summer i'm going to go through this attention setup you know step by step in detail we'll have it soon but so any kathy setting that up at home and what i do with my clients is i'll have the client and the horse do the attention game and then i walk around you know in a big arc behind the horse and maybe i'm waving my arms or i hop up and down and can the client keep the horse attentive to them that could help your guy out a bunch to where he turns off whatever this is and he gets more focused and relaxed with you instead of cautious about this thing over here yeah i, li I like that actually because i have two children so i could use them with yes. different things couldn't i <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just yeah get, get you and your horse lined up and, and get the attention working first you know really good for you two can you be important enough to your horse that they'll pay attention mm -hmm. and then i I use just a timer of three minutes. You know, can you get your horse to just sit and stare at your belly for three minutes without looking away? That's a long time, but man, that really helps build this. Once you get that, okay, now I'm going to go turn the, the kids loose with the play toys, the outside defense. You know, you guys just raise hell and be kids and make noise and do things. Can you keep your horse with you? That's, that would be an awesome setup, Kathy. That'd be great. I very appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and just know that you're working off of a sight trigger. He wasn't as afraid of pigs any more than something else, but just the sight got him. And then maybe the, maybe the structure of the pig, right? It could have been just a, it got him, but it's a sight trigger, not yeah. a pig trigger. And they, you know, pigs are very curious. So they were domestic pigs that came running to the fence. Oh, heck um, yeah. The little predators like coming right at him, right? He's just like, what the hell? They're gonna get us. Uh, oh, I, was, I was riding down the road and I nearly he went into the ditch and we were right beside a fence. So it was quite a scary experience. Yes. Um, yes. But we got through it. But um yeah, so I, I I understand what you're saying and I really appreciate the small steps that you've given tonight. It's been great. Yeah, and and, and, and what we're wanting to have, Kathy, is you get all of these small steps working really nicely, then when you're out under pressure we want your horse to be able to be like hey there's a thing i'm worried but i'm okay instead of mm. there's a thing i'm out of here we, we just need to pause that for a half a second and then that leads to one second and then to two and then to three and then to five and now we're fine but we yeah. gotta got get that pause going awesome great right. question. great Thank you. that's exactly how it happens is like that yes appreciate it thank you yes Anybody else? Kate, I'm going to talk to you, but anybody else have anything from watching? How did Winter do out on her first ride out in the open and slick rock and walking around? I mean, that was just a short little piece, but yes, Steve, thumbs up. I agree. She did great. We, we kind of wandered around through the trees and we, there wasn't really any other obstacles or anything to do much with. And so I found this little rock spot and I thought, oh, this will be good. Let me let me walk her up and down these rocks. Um, she didn't have any time, waste any time figuring out the slick rock. I mean, she walked right on it and was really comfortable. 
but the elevation change, you know, you can see just that little rise. That's a question, you know, boom, what is this? Am I safe? She wanted to touch it with that vibrisi, make sure it felt good, it was safe. Okay, I'll walk forward now, but worked out great. I'm so impressed. Okay, Kate, bring it on. <laughs> yes, let's talk about your girl. Yes. I, you know, I mean, do we want to do it right now? I know it's after four, so you let me know. Uh, well, anyway, I just wanted to get your feedback on what you saw from her right now. We'll talk more about her. Yeah. Her. Um, I think what I love the most is that she wasn't concerned about you being on her back at all. She, you know, was completely comfortable. She was, you know, at ease with you. At least that's what I saw. Um, she was more just trying to figure out her environment and what was going on around her. How did she feel underneath you? Yeah, once once we kind of worked at first, when I first got on her and we started going and you know, she didn't, she was just upregulated enough that she wasn't following my direction necessarily. So that mm -hmm. was, oh, I, I'd say it was teeny bit tense. I really had all the confidence in the world in her, but that was the only time that she really got kind of tight or tense was, she was just trying to find her way through the bushes. And I was telling her, I have a very specific route we're going to go. We're going to go left around this bush and then right and then right and then left and left and then right, <laughs> left, right, left, and then this, you know. And so once she just found that and that relieved a lot of her concern, knowing that I'm I'm picking where we're going. All you got to do is move your feet, you know, just relax. Mm -hmm. and, and that helped her a bunch. And then she just smoothed right out and shoot, I was walking her in and out of the trees and it went fantastic so no yeah at all yeah she she just looked curious um I mean definitely cautious because that's her personality but not frightened I didn't feel like I saw fear in her no she she it's just learning to learn like you know even just mm -hmm. going up a little step she's like ah how, what do I do but yeah she got the tool you know she put her nose down she wanted to touch it and then she worked herself right through it where she could go through so kind of like a toddler she you know she kind of approaches things like a toddler yes and that's about the speed you've got to go to is just one mm -hmm. time and let them work through it so yeah i love it i love it great job i Fantastic. can't wait to thank you everybody for being here and kathy i don't know if you know it or not but you're on the wrong side of the car it's just that you're gonna crash over there <laughs> look at steve see steve's on the steve's on the correct side you're I actually had to pull over when I was talking because I couldn't concentrate that drive. So I was <laughs> yes, driving. Yes, yes. We are drive. We do drive on the other side of the road. Oh gosh! Well, welcome. Thank you, and uh, join us again. I'm I'm still want to do this every Wednesday to just keep having some fun and share this with your friends, please. Uh, let's just keep having it be a fun conversation. I, I love all of you joining me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate. It. All right, you guys. See you all later. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. No, I got to figure out. I can't figure out how to end the meeting here, Cecilia. I know. But I've got my screen minimized now, but I can't see. Oh, let's see. Let's do this. Oh, okay. Now I just got it back. I can, I can do it from here. So there you go. There okay. you go. Thanks, Thanks Steve. You. I mean, last <laughs> where I got Steve. I don't know. Thanks. See ya. Awesome. See you again. Thank you. All right.